can oxalate dumping cause itchy, dry, flaky scalp or dandruff? Let's have a talk about that. Now, before I get started on this video, I just want to say, first of all, excuse my voice, I've been sick and thankfully it's getting a little bit better. Um, I'm still having to have coughing breaks while I'm talking because every now and then my um, the talking makes me want to cough. So I've had to cut my videos up. They take a little bit longer to edit because of that. Um, but also I want to say that I am considering um, starting up a community and I've talked about this on a few of my videos. I'm trying to remember to put it into my videos. Um, I'm thinking about starting up a community for people on the carnivore diet or, you know, ketoboard diet or whatever. Um, my idea is to have a place for people like myself who whose journeys haven't been as straightforward as we might want them to be. I mean, if somebody is on carnivore and they're having a really cruisy journey, they can join as well. There's no worries there. But... I just thought if we could have a community where there's a lot of people like myself and I like a lot of my viewers because I know that I've got a lot of viewers who are also having issues on carnivore and are kind of struggling to find their way through. I thought if we could have a group where there's a lot of us there, um, then we can help each other and we can help others who are just starting out. So, you know, for me, I mean, my journey has been full of oxalate dumping issues. Um, diarrhea, very slow weight loss, I have lipedema, you know, like um, I have MTHFR genetic variations, I have some other genetic variations that have made me more predisposed to histamine issues and all of these things, so my journey's been kind of really up and down and I've learned a lot, and so, you know, myself and others like me who have had some or all of these issues, by the time we find our way through them, we've actually got a lot of knowledge and a lot of understanding of what others might be going through. And so if if you think that a community where there are people like us in there might be of value to you, I have set up a um, feedback page on my website. There is any comments or suggestions to let me know that you would be interested in joining a group like that. It's looking at the moment that it would need to be about $5 a month um, to cover the costs uh, with the platform that I'm looking at. And I'm wanting to see if I can get enough people to get started with this because, as I said to someone the other day, who said, please, please start this group, is we need to have um, people in there for it to be a community and there needs to be some activity going on because otherwise, you know, people are going to come in to join and then they're going to leave because you know the, the, it needs to have a community that's engaged in them so, uh, on the video and under my video so that you can go and fill out that form and let me know that you would be interested and then that way I can email you once um, I'm ready to start that. Okay so let's get on with this video. Hi there my name is Sue welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before I have been on the carnival diet for a bit over two years now. Now when I started on the carnival diet I had no scalp issue I used to get a little bit of like a little tiny patch of psoriasis or something up here a little bit of scaly stuff but it was only tiny um, I had problem had I had had problems with um, like a psoriasis on my scalp years ago when I was on a vegan diet and then it had gone away when I, basically when I started using the uh, doTERRA shampoo and conditioner, it just all cleared up. And so, and I haven't had it for years. And so when I started on the carnival diet, everything was as normal for about the first six months or so. And then all of a sudden, I started noticing that I was getting this itchy, flaky, horrible scalp. And it got really, really bad. I did a video about it probably about a year or so ago, and I will link to that um, underneath this video. So when this all kind of kicked off, it got it got really mental. And I was quite kind of despairing because I was like, man, is this ever going to go away? So I had I've had this issue for probably close to two years. And it was so bad for such a long time that I think that most people would have um, tried, you know, some kind of medication, gone to their doctor or whatever. But because I don't see doctors, I don't, 
that I don't kind of go there generally. And I don't believe in suppressing skin issues. My thought with this right from the beginning was that maybe it was to do with oxalate dumping. Because I've spoken a lot about oxalate um, and my oxalate dumping journey since I've been on carnivore. It was pretty wild, especially for about the first 12 to 18 months. Um, and I've had... I believe a lot of oxalate stored in my body for a very long time. So I've spoken about this in other videos, you know, I've had gut issues for decades um, and, you know, even right from when I was a child, I was on a fairly high oxalate diet, used to eat tons of um, vitamin C tablets because my, my mum and dad used to buy those and they were sweet and they tasted like oranges. So I used to get in there and I'd down as many of those as I thought I could get away with. And so I was eating a lot of high oxalate foods. You know, my dad was um, heading into a vegetarian diet. And so, you know, we were doing all the all the different things. And um, so then as an adult, I was always very highly plant-based. I've been vegetarian for over a decade. I've been vegan uh, for a couple of years solid. And then off and on, even once I started eating meat, I kept going back to a raw vegan diet and eating all of these foods that were super high in oxalate. And I didn't know. You know, I mean, you don't know what you don't know until you know. And I wish I'd known because I wouldn't have done it. But I believe because my gut health was so bad, my gut health got really bad. And my, my food basically wasn't digesting. I had leaky gut. And I think because my gut health was so bad, um, also because I'd had a lot of mold exposure, I think that made it all worse. And so I've just ended up with this huge oxalate burden in my body. And so, of course, when I started on carnivore, I just stopped all the oxalate and my body started pulling it all out of the tissues and dumping it any way it could. And so when the scalp thing started, I kind of wasn't really sure why initially. And I thought oh, it might just be a detox thing or it could be oxalate. But it went on and on and on. And <laughs> it got so bad. And it was, this, it was like this for months. It got so bad that when I got up in the morning, we would have to just brush off all the pillowcase and the sheets because it would look like there's been a snowstorm in the bed. And the, our couch, our lounge suite in the, in the morning after I'd been sitting on the couch at night time would just be covered in skin. It was everywhere. It was all over my computer keyboard. It would be on the back of my chair that I sit on at my desk. It would be all over my desk. It was everywhere, and if you look back at my my videos from through that time, you'll see that often it's on my shoulders because I'd forget to brush it off, or I might brush it off, you know, while I was thinking about doing my video, and then by the time I did my video, it was back, it was back again, and it was so incredibly itchy. It, used to, it was driving me nuts, and it felt like all over my scalp, so the whole of my scalp felt like it was covered in sand. And then across the bottom would get really, really lumpy and scaly. I had scaly bits, you know, up above my ears and around the back of my skull. And it was pretty wild. Um, I remember thinking to myself, you know, if I um, gave myself a crew cut, it would be incredibly embarrassing because you would be able to see what was going on on my scalp. I had a crew cut uh, quite a number of years ago and it... it would be I wouldn't be able to do it because it would just look so bad uh, it was I, I'm so glad that I had blonde hair and not dark hair because if I had dark hair everybody would have been able to see it all the time as it was I used to get bits of scaly stuff in my hair because I'd be sitting there you know especially when you're kind of absent-minded you're picking at it and it would all scratching you know and it would end up in my hair and so it was, it was really embarrassing. But what I found over the last maybe six months or so, kind of this year, is that it has been gradually getting noticeably better. And um, I noticed, I guess, towards the end of last year, like the top of my scalp kind of cleared up and it wasn't a problem anymore, but it was all still through the back here. Now, at the point of recording this video, it still was there just a bit across the base of my skull here. It's still kind of lumpy and it still gets itchy, but the rest of my scalp is completely clear. So it's just just a patch, like, and, and it goes away some days or just about completely goes away, and then it'll come back. I think that histamine actually plays a little bit of a role in how much it actually gets itchy and how much it raises. 
but I, I mean through the time I have tried all sorts of different natural natural options to try and settle it down. I tried everything from you know baking soda and apple cider vinegar, changing to different shampoos. I've used the same shampoo and conditioner for years, you know, the doTERRA products, but all of a sudden that wasn't working for me. And what I was finding is that the shampoo was actually drying my scalp out too much and it would make it itchier. And so I was trying different things. I was trying the, um, I'd found that the the doTERRA, they do a um, shampoo bar. That was actually quite good, um, but it's been out of stock for months and months and months, and so I haven't been able to get it. So... I've actually been had actually been using my daughter's um, tallow soap she'd been making. She'd given me some, and so I'd been using that, and so that worked quite well. Except I'd find that over a, after a few washes, um, my the, it's like the tallow would build up on my hair a bit. So then I'd have to use the shampoo to get the tallow out, and so then it would get itchier again. But it was it was itchy anyway. But it would just get worse. But now I'm finding that I can use my shampoo again and it doesn't make it any worse, which is wonderful. So I have spoken in videos about how I had uh, been listening to Elliot Overton and he'd talked about how there's uh, two deficiencies that he sees that can cause um, itchy, kind of flaky scalps on, on carnivore or, or keto, I guess. And that can be either um, biotin or vitamin uh, B2, riboflavin. So I've tried both of those, and they didn't really. I wasn't didn't really make any difference. I was I was kind of thinking at first, oh maybe, but it, it's just been gradually getting better on its own accord. And so the the um, taking those supplements didn't really make any difference to it. So because nothing's made any difference to it and it's just kind of gradually got better on its own I'm pretty certain that it's been oxalate dumping now I've heard Sally Norton talk about how she has seen really bad itchy um, and flaky scalps uh, on carnivore with or low oxalate diets because of oxalate dumping so yeah I'm, I'm picking that that's what it is so I don't know how common this is um, I have seen others talking about it but I thought I would share my story on here because if this is you and, and yours has been going on for, you know, a year or two years like mine and you're thinking this is never going to get better, um, there is hope at the, and light at the end of the tunnel because mine is, has just gradually been getting better and better and better over about the last six months. And I'm so glad because um, it was so, so bad. This was, this apart from the diarrhea that I, that I had for a very long time, this has been probably the worst part of my oxalate dumping journey on carnivore. But, you know, there's there's a little bit of dandruff now, um, you know, at night time. When I've been sitting on the couch at night and I get up in the morning, there might be a few little specks on the back of the couch uh, where I've been kind of sitting there scratching while I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Um, there really isn't anything much in the bed anymore, which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that within the next six months or so it'll be completely gone. So that's obviously been a big um, pile of oxalate, you know, it's because it, it, it felt, you could kind of feel the oxalate crystals coming through my scalp. Like I said, it felt like sand all over my scalp. For a very long time it was like that, and um, so yeah, the, I obviously, I've said this before, I think that I had a lot of oxalate build up in my head for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why your body puts it where it does, but just because, you know, I was having, you know, all the issue with nosebleeds, which I realised eventually was oxalate, and then, yeah, with this whole scalp thing, I mean, chances are there is still more that needs to come out. I've spoken about um, having issues, you know, with my teeth and my gums getting sore still, um, which I believe is oxalate as well, moving with tartar build up, I mean, spoken in my last video about that and how, you know, my uh, tartar was wild even before I started on carnivore and then once uh, I started oxalate dumping it just got way, way worse and it, it was pretty crazy as well. So, you know, a lot of people who haven't been through this stuff, they think that the whole oxalate thing just sounds a bit mental but, you know, if you're living through it, it's just, you, you, you can't deny what's actually going on. I mean, I've had oxalate crystals come out of my breasts en masse. And so, you know, it's, um, the stuff is moving out of my body and I'm so grateful that it is. But it can be a little bit of a hairy, scary and wild journey, um, depending on how much oxalate is in your body. So, yeah, so that's, that's 
what's been going on with my scalp and um, it is just as I said so much better and I'm so thankful that it's finally clearing up because it's really embarrassing you know because I wear a lot of dark clothes and um, especially in the winter and so you know I found myself trying to find light stuff to wear all the time so it wasn't so obvious so yeah even I, I, don't know, I should have taken a photo of this even at my car seat in the car we've got black leather seats in the car and the car seat and all the creases you know where the upholstery kind of folds in and it's all creased was just all full of skin from my scalp from me sitting in the car scratching while we're, while we're driving and uh, my husband had to vacuum it all out because it was just looked like I don't know it looked like salt that it all collected like somebody poured a whole lot of salt into the onto the car seat and it just all collected in all those grooves and um, so yeah that's that's how bad it was. Really, really bad. You wouldn't think so much uh, skin or whatever can come off your scalp, but it has over the last two years. So yeah, so that's my that's my scalp story um, and where I'm at with that. If you've got any comments or questions, pop those below. If this has happened to you, let me know um, because it just it seems like I've had a few things that have gone on that are a bit maybe over the top compared to a lot of people I, I don't know I kind of I think to myself why me how come my body is so bloody weird it's just everything seems to be OTT but I think it's just me my age my dodgy genetics my crappy gut health you know everything is just kind of piled up one on top of the other and so my my journey's been a little bit wild but at least by me going through this I can teach you and and help you to go through yours because <laughs> Because yeah, it's it's um it's been it's definitely been a learning experience. So yeah, that's it. Um, as I said, comments or questions below, and I'll get those get them to you as um, I'll get to those as soon as I can. I thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you again another day. Goodbye for now.